time coming to the NGH convention, you may not know that there are one hour sessions, two hour sessions, and even three hour sessions. In fact, there are actually even whole day sessions before and after the convention. But on the Friday and Saturday and Sunday of convention, there are one hours, two hours, and three hours. So you have the choice of what you want to attend. And there's lots and lots of choices. Now, Linda Donalds is with us today. She's going to be presenting a two hour workshop. Linda, when is that? Uh, Saturday at 11 a.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. And yep. your topic is? On adults with ADHD, how to work with them using hypnosis. You've given this presentation before. Yeah, I think this is my fourth year. Nice. So. Nice. Wonderful. So tell us, just give us the cliff note version of why this topic is important to you. It's important to me. I started teaching it shortly, I don't know, about a year after I got diagnosed with ADHD, which once I got diagnosed, explained an awful lot of things to me that always puzzled me. Um, a lot of it had to do with kind of organizing myself and getting things done and all of that. So, um, and I find that there's, there's not a lot of information out there on how to do hypnosis with people who have ADHD. Now, there are a lot of adults that have ADHD, but there are also a lot of children. We're more familiar with young kids and teenagers struggling with it, but um, as they find out more and more about it, there's an awful lot of adults getting diagnosed in their 40s, 50s, 60s, yep. and I've even met some people who get diagnosed in their 70s. Yep. Yep. So it's a, it's a very important topic. So. so it's, it's pretty, I mean, if we're going to just briefly be stereotypical for a reason, right? Stereotypically, like you said, it mostly gets talked about with children right. in regards to their inability to be successful at school, right? Well, right. if we could just get Billy to settle down and manage his ADHD, he would do better in school. Tell us more about, um, you, you sort of started to, but tell us a little more about how does it affect adults? I mean, they're not in school anymore. They don't have to sit still in their chair, right? It's, let's get right. away from that stereotype of kids at school. How does it affect adults? Yeah, so a lot of the things with the kids is people hone in on the hyperactivity. Right. And when, they get, when children get into their teen years, a lot of times that hyperactivity disappears outwardly. But hyperactivity also exists internally mind going in a million directions, fascinated by a lot of stuff, want to do, you know, 101 projects all in one hour. And uh, you take on a lot of stuff. It's interesting because a lot of adults, you know, through figuring out intuitively um, how to manage their ADHD, a lot of them do go on and go through college, get degrees, have jobs. A lot of them find themselves in jobs where there's a lot of um, dynamic things going on so they can keep their busy brain, you know, useful to lots of different things. So um, not everybody manages to get to college. So, uh, and adults have, uh, there's a, there are a lot of variety of different things that adults struggle with. Some of them have trouble even just keeping a job and, and being able to have long-term employment. Others, that's not at all an issue with. So um, different things that show up for, for adults. When I teach this workshop, I go through a whole range of different things that people might be coming in for. Um, a lot of times there are different things. They all seem to have a lot to do with productivity and, um, and things around sleep issues too. Really? Uh, people with the... Well, the the thing that's really cool about this, because I'm so excited for this year's convention, because I have some new things to bring in. Um, last November, I attended down in Atlanta, Georgia, the International Conference on ADHD. Oh. So I was an attendee for that for my first time ever. Um, and I get to meet a lot of well-known people in the ADHD world. And, um, and I decided that this, uh, this year when they were looking for presenters, that I would give a shot at putting in a proposal for their convention. And that's why I said I wanted to wait till May to do my interview. Well, we're now right. in June. But my proposal got accepted. Nice. So I will be presenting. This time they have their convention in um, 
St. Louis, Missouri um, in November. And so I will be presenting to people about hypnosis there, but very specifically on sleep issues for ADHD. Very cool, Linda. Great so, job. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. they have, you know, I, they, as I walked around and introduced myself last year, they were, they really couldn't recall having met any hypnotists at their convention before. Yeah. I was really surprised about that. So hmm. this will be a great opportunity to bring what we all do to, to them for something very specific. Excellent. So I'll be integrating some of that stuff into my um, talk at convention, the NGH convention this yeah. August, helping um, whoever attends uh, know a couple of extra things around working with sleep issues. Good. So Let's just talk a little bit more about that. Concrete things. People come, they spend two hours with you. When their mm -hmm. two hours is done, they're going to be able to go home. And what are they going to be able to do with clients that they couldn't do before? A lot of the people that have come to the workshop in the past years have discovered things about ADHD that they didn't know before, or they didn't understand what was going on behind the scenes about observable patterns they saw in people with ADHD. And actually a few people that have attended started to think perhaps they ought to go see if maybe they themselves had ADHD. <laughs> you know, that, can, right. that often seems to happen when people come to this workshop. Yeah. But um, I go through a outline of what a six session program might look like for a client coming in with ADHD. And so when, when they leave my workshop, they'll have that kind of framework. I'm not going to give them exactly written out scripts and stuff like that, but they, they're going to, they already have, you know, most of us hypnotists already have a bunch of stuff in our toolboxes mm -hmm. that we already know. So I'm going to kind of help contour them to working with ADHD. And, um, and there are things in there too, if, if, the person attending my workshop knows they have ADHD and they're looking for some tools for themselves to figure out how to manage their own hypnosis business better because the problem is they have ADHD. I've, I've got stuff for that in the workshop as well, although it is more focused on working with clients, but we can always be our own client, as I like to say. Yes, yes, <laughs> good for you. We should be our first client. We, we should be should. doing things for ourselves with the tools that we already have. So. I love your attitude. You're so yeah. good. Thank you. All right. So August, we're on Saturday at yeah, Saturday 11. at 11 a.m. Now I did the other interview, and so this workshop, I have my other one hour on idiomotor response testing on Saturday at 9 a.m. Okay. for one hour. I get a little short break, you and then I'm break. back in again for <laughs> two hour. So they got me kind of, you know, it's close to you, but that'll be good. All okay. Done, so we can all hang right, out Saturday all Saturday morning with me. Very cool. Hang out with Linda. All right. She's going to be yeah. doing some great stuff. And clearly yeah. she's tapping into something that um, I know there have been some people that have worked with ADD and ADHD over the years, but I think she's totally right. I've never heard a lot of people talk about it and yeah. she's tapping into something here that has some real growth potential for some of you who are looking for more ways to do good in the world. So yeah. uh, take advantage of this time with Linda. Linda, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. All right.